Hey everybody, I'm Tiffany. We're so excited to worship with you today. Wherever that you're watching from, just set everything aside. Let's focus on God and let's praise his name today. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. Sin was heavy, the chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name. Well, hello, online family. I'm Matt, our church's media director, and I want to welcome you to our online service. Over the past two years, ministry at our church has taken on many forms. Many things are still uncertain about the transition out of COVID-19 from a pandemic to an endemic, but some changes will go back to how they were prior to 2020. But after many discussions, we in church leadership recognize that this online service, while it began as a response to COVID, has a permanent place in our church and in our community. We know that many of you have tuned in faithfully every single week to worship, to listen, to give, and to participate with our church family. However, we've realized two things. One, we don't know who is tuning in every week. And two, we want to do more to connect and shepherd our online congregation. 
We have a number of things that we are praying about and plans to increase our online church services presence in our church and enrich the community of those of you who tune in every week. So here's what we're asking. Whether you're a longtime member of our church or you just started watching, if you tune in regularly to our online service and call UCC your home church, would you please go to ucov.com online, click the button to fill out an online connection card, and make sure you select online under service attendant. We have a number of things planned specific to our online family and we don't want you to miss out. We cannot stress enough how important it is to stay connected. We cannot do this life or this faith journey alone. So pause this video, head to ucov.com slash online to fill out that online connection card and we will keep you up to date on all things related to our online community. Well, good morning, good morning, everyone. How many of you were part of some type of graduation from something this past week? Yeah, how many of you were sitting in sweltering heat this weekend? Yeah, thank you. Yes, well, we made it. We're here. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm John Fanus. I'm the lead pastor here. I just want to welcome you to University Covenant Church. I got to meet so many of you already this morning who are newer to our church, just trying to plug in. And I just want to say welcome. We're just so glad you're here. Uh, we love Jesus. Jesus loves us by his grace. And we want you to be part of this family. Uh, hey, we have so many fun things going on today. I'm super excited. I'm going to share a few things. One is we have a very special guest preacher, uh, Brian Murphy. Uh, Brian and I and another pastor named Marco Ambri started meeting together about three years ago. Uh, we were all lead pastors and just wanted mutual friendship and accountability. We meet three or four times a year. And then Brian just got elected to be what's called the superintendent of the Pacific Southwest Conference. Our denomination is divided into about 11 different regions, and we're in the West Coast region called the Pacific Southwest Conference, and Brian just got elected to be the president of that for the next, I believe, four years, and we had already scheduled him to preach, but you guys are the first church to hear him preach as the newly elected Pacific Southwest Conference person, so... <laughs> I would like to claim that it was my credit. It was purely God and chance so that he is here. But we're really excited to have Brian preach with us in just a moment. And you'll just love him to death. Hey, uh, go ahead and pull out your program. We have a lot of things going on uh, inside your program. There's announcements, some fun things coming up. There's a place for taking sermon notes. Uh, there's a giving envelope. You guys know that this church is 100% supported by our collective giving to God. So thank you for that. That's why the giving envelope is there. There's a connection card in there to fill out your name, any prayer requests or praises you have, uh, and just know that that's all in here. Please take a moment to look. And like I said, a lot of you are newer to our church. You know, our desire is this church feels like and becomes family to you. We want to help you connect. Um, part of how we do that is through our life groups, and we'll be talking about that in the coming weeks, but also we're having a party after church today. And so newcomers, if you would fill out the uh, connection card, we would love to get to know you. Also, new Newcomers, we have a welcome kiosk in the lobby, and we have actually a special gift bag there. If you go and find Rachel, she will give you something, and it includes not only a way for us to get to know you, but free coffee as well, which is worth gold, right? So we'd love for you to get that and just uh, introduce yourself to us. Okay, so today is a special celebration Sunday for us. At 12.30 today, we have our annual celebration barbecue. The word barbecue means we actually have food here. Uh, it's gonna be right outside in our pa patio. We'll have food, drinks, lawn games, and there's gonna even be an ice cream truck here as well. That should get more excitement than it just did. Yes, okay. So it'll be a great time for our church just to hang out, fellowship, get to know each other. Uh, if you're volunteering, I have a message for you. The message is meet in the lobby at the time you're scheduled to volunteer. That's your message. Um, and also it's a $5 suggested donation to the event. And in light of the theme of celebration, we put together a slideshow just to celebrate our year together as a church family. Let's watch this video.
you know, just watching that slideshow, I, this is the first time I saw it, just what a year, right? I mean, a year ago, a little over a year ago, we were still kind of meeting outdoor on the lawn, and uh, here we are. That's a, that's a lot, right? Can we just take a moment right now, will you just join me in prayer as we just sit with God and thank him for his faithfulness to us, and yet at the same time lift our burdens to him. Let's pray. God, as we were worshiping about your faithfulness, I just really saw it in that slideshow. God, this was a, a very non-linear, crazy year, and it feels like we're still in it. And yet throughout it all, Lord, we see the thread of your spirit with us, supporting us, caring for us, reminding us of who we are in you, reminding us that if you were willing to die for us, how much more you're willing to do today for us. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of church community in the midst of the craziness. We thank you for friendships and support that your hands and feet were manifested and shown through our ability to love each other and receive love from one another. We just want to stop and say thank you, God, for your faithfulness. You are good. And Lord, we thank you for church family, and yet at the same time, we're, we're recognizing, Lord, that we are still in a lot of craziness and grief, Lord. Violence, resurgence of COVID, fear of safety, division. Oh God, we need you so much. Holy Spirit, I pray you continue to do something special in this particular church community and in the churches worldwide so that, Lord, in this craziness, we're able to be a light on a hill, salt of the earth. I pray, God, that our receiving of your love for us would be so transforming, that our openness to your spirit in us would be so transforming, that our awareness of your love for us would, would shape who we are in terms of our love for one another. So, Lord, we ask for your healing. We ask for your grace. And, Lord, where there's brokenness and we're the cause of it, we ask that you would be, have us quick to ask for forgiveness, to seek forgiveness. Lord, where we've been injured, we pray that by your grace we'd be quick to forgive. Lord, we need you, and we say thank you for never leaving us. And as we worship you right now, Lord, I pray you hear these praises. We pray for Pastor Brian as he shares the word with us. And Lord, we just pray for a lot of fun this afternoon, celebrating your grace in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Good morning, University Covenant Church. It is my pleasure and honor. Uh oh, I think my beard is rustling the leaves. There we go. It's wonderful pleasure and an honor to be with you this morning. Uh, as, as Pastor John mentioned, we have had the opportunity to get to know each other, to pray for one another, pray for one another's families here, the journeys of our um, ministries together, and so it's, it's an honor for me to be uh, standing in this pulpit and uh, sharing the Word of God with you this morning. Um, I did a little homework, as I often do. I went on the website and checked out the history of University Covenant Church and uh, the wonderful leadership, the wonderful ministry, several of your pastors and interim pastors I actually have the pleasure of knowing, and so I feel honored to be able to stand in the same place they stood and share the word with you this morning. Uh, a couple of things uh, by way of introduction. Uh, I am the newly elected superintendent, so I greet you on behalf of the Pacific Southwest Conference and the 150 plus churches that are part of our conference, uh, that we are all doing this wonderful journey of life and ministry together. So greetings from the staff and, and uh, all of the corners of the conference. Uh, I came uh, from South Bay Community Church in Fremont, California. That's where I pastored and served the last uh, 15 or 20 years. Um, and so that is a predominantly African-American church. I mention that for this reason. It would be nice if every now and then I could get a mercy amen. 
uh, just a, a rumble, a clear your throat, just out of pure grace and mercy. It doesn't mean you agree with anything I'm saying. You're just being gracious. So that would be helpful for me uh, as that is part of my tradition. Uh, but I, I, again, am, am glad to be here. Um, I want to ask you to reflect for a moment. How are you showing up today? As we come to this space where we're going to hear from the Word of God, how, how, how are you here? Um, Pastor John mentioned that we're in this interesting season of hopefully entering into a post-pandemic world where we still have cases of COVID even in this church family. My mother caught COVID about a week ago. Uh, and, and so we've got all of the restrictions and don't know when to wear a mask, got all these other things that we're still kind of wrestling with. Um, and, and yet on the other hand, we're celebrating graduations and we're seeing things open back up. And so we're kind of in this, this transitional space. And so we probably coming into this place, even this morning, literally, I mean, that's not a philosophical question. I'm asking, how are you arriving here today to worship God? I saw an article that came out of the um, Baylor College School of Medicine that is talking about a lot of us are feeling this fatigue, this post-COVID fatigue, the drain, the, the heaviness, the weariness, the, the, the grief. Things have been lost. My son had to spend a year home with us instead of being off at college. He definitely will speak about grief and loss. Um, <laughs> All kinds of celebrations and proms and family vacations and those that were even unable to be with loved ones during their time to transition to glory. All kinds of things are, are still weighing heavily on our mind consciously and subconsciously. How are you arriving today? The Bible uses a term that I think is so appropriate, weary. Just wearisome and burdened. I think that could be a lot of how we are coming here today. And so I, I want to speak to a scripture that you have probably heard uh, many times, read many times, heard preached several times. But I had a wonderful time with God uh, at a retreat of the superintendents uh, several months, uh, several weeks ago. And God gave me this scripture in a way that I'd never read it before. And so I want to share that with you. It comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Uh, and I think the words are going to be on the screen. Wonderful. Um, let me give a little context for this scripture, just to kind of place it. Matthew is the first gospel, and he spends the first part of the gospel explaining that Jesus is the awaited for Messiah, the one that we have been waiting to hear. And then we hear t uh, Jesus' teachings, the probably most famous of which is the Sermon on the Mount, where he explains this kingdom, this glorious kingdom of God is different than anything you've encountered before. It's more than you can hope or dream for. It elevates the, the, the poor and, the, and, and the, the marginalized and those who are feeling left out and left aside and cast aside. Jesus comes to give this gift of the kingdom to you. And then the next couple of chapters, 8 through 10, are really talking about how Jesus causes the kingdom to encounter people. We hear all about all these healings and miracles. Jesus is bringing this kingdom to our lives. And thank you. Oh, my God, I was hoping for one. Thank you. Yes, the kingdom is being manifested as we see the presence of God in large and small ways. It is a gift of our Savior, of his mercy and grace. We encounter that. And so these miracles and stories that you see in Matthew lead up to what I think is a linchpin moment in Matthew 11. And I had a new revelation of what God was really saying in the scripture. Let me read it and then I'll pray and then we'll unpack this a little bit. Matthew 11, verse 28, the words of Jesus, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Bow with me if you would, please. 
Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your word. We are grateful that you are Emmanuel. We are grateful for the incredible gift of your son, Jesus. Just weeks ago, it seems so long ago already, but just several weeks ago, we were celebrating the resurrection of our Savior and the moment that transformed our lives and, and our realities for all eternity, God. And forgive us that we have forgotten the joy of that moment that we celebrated just a few weeks ago. God, help us to be present. Help us to come before your altar that we may cast our cares upon you and receive the gift of your presence and your mercy and that we may be reminded that you are the one who takes our ashes and makes them into something beautiful. Would you send your presence, your spirit around each and every person and family in within the sound of my voice that we may receive from you this morning and be transformed. We pray these things in hopeful and expectation in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's children said, amen. 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 That was kind of a long lead in, but I wanted to set the context for the scripture. I want you to notice something about this scripture that I really never noticed before. There's a lot of action in this scripture. There's a lot of, a lot of verbs in this scripture. And I, I, I knew it. I knew this, oh yeah, this fuzzy God is going to give us this gift of rest. But there's so much more beneath the surface. The first thing I want you to pull, uh, notice is the first word that he gives us, come to me. That's an invitation. It's not a forced march. It's not a commandment. It's an invitation from our God to enter into the presence and the reality that he wants nothing more than to be in relationship you with you, to walk with you every day of your life through the hills and the valleys. And he says, would you come and be with me? Amen. Amen. There's a decision point there. And I imagine there's some here, there's some maybe watching all online, there are some who haven't really decided to make that invitation real. And can I tell you, you don't get the benefit package of a Savior unless you have accepted the invitation to be his child. See, we can float around the church world. We can hang out with people that know God. I did it for years. And then one day I realized he wants a personal relationship with me. He knows me better than I know myself. It says he knows the numbers of my head. Uh, he has the numbers of the hairs on my head, which is rapidly decreasing, but he's got them numbered. <laughs> That's how well he knows me. That's how intimately he is aware of every thought and fear and good moment and bad moment that I have. And he's inviting me to allow him into my heart. And none of the rest of this happens until that invitation is accepted. And who's he inviting? Everyone who is weary and burdened. Well, I asked you how you came to this place this morning because I imagine some of us in this place, many of us in this place, probably all of us, if we're honest, feel a bit weary and burdened this morning. And here's the first thing I noticed that was really amazing to me, that there is an active and a passive state of being that we're in, right? Weary just means you have accumulated the weight of all the challenges and all the all those responsibilities and all the things that you're juggling. And it's just weighing you down. It's like walking through life with balls of weight and, and chains weighing you down. And I just get weary from the journey. What's wrong? I'm okay, but I'm just weary. From all that life is thrown at me. He said, well, if that's how you're feeling, I got an invitation for you. And maybe you're burdened. Maybe you are in the midst of, of a season of busyness or, or as we're opening up, you know, I, I've heard so many people, first of all, those that are grateful to have jobs, which is a good thing to have right now. But many of those of us that are working are not just doing the job that we were doing a few years ago, but we're doing our job, our co-workers job, some of our boss's job, a few of our employees jobs. And we, we got three or four jobs that we're all getting probably for less money, maybe the same. And we are burdened by all that we are trying to carry and 
and execute and be responsible for as we're loving our families and, and walking in with our church family and just trying to survive. Burdened. And if that's the weight that you're feeling of that responsibility, he says, come. Come and I will give you rest. Now, now what is this give you rest thing? What's that about? If we accept the invitation, if we realize that we're in a state where we need a, a, a break from all that we're carrying around, then this invitation to rest is given. And what he's inviting us to is to encounter God. Now, that doesn't mean that God is the magic tooth fairy, that we meet God and all of our problems go away. That's never what he says. What he says is, I am with you. I am with you on the mountaintop. I am with you on the valley. And I can promise you that the journey is better if you walk it with God as opposed to trying to do it by your own strength. We don't understand the blessings. I love that poem. You've seen that poem probably. It's been around for years, Footsteps, where the guy is walking through the, uh, the, the beach and he sees that at the low points of life, there was only one set of footsteps. And the punchline is, Jesus said, I was carrying you at the lowest moments when you didn't have the strength to make it on your own. I love that image because that's exactly what God does. He gives us strength beyond our own. He gives us wisdom beyond our own capacity to understand. He gives us visions of hope in the future for where we can be and the things that he's called us to. We encounter the kingdom of God when we're in relationship with our Savior. And there is a rest in that. There is a peace. The Bible says a peace that surpasses all understanding. I don't know why I'm not crazy right now. I don't know why I'm not at the end. I, I mean, everything around me, if you look at my circumstances, I should be overwhelmed. I should be, I should be losing my mind, but somehow there is a rest that I've entered into that I didn't manufacture. I didn't produce it. It was a gift that God allowed me to partake because I was walking with my Savior through this challenging life. And so he invites us to pause and I think there's multiple levels of that. Some of that is just our own discipline to say, I'm going to get off of this gerbil treadmill that I'm running on. I like to say it this way. If, if God during creation took a day off, you can afford one. <laughs> you shouldn't be busier than God is. And we can justify all the reasons why I can never stop. I can never pull back. I can never rest. I, I can never give myself grace. I can never give myself space. But you're doing more than even your Savior did. In the midst of his incredible ministry, we see time and time again that Jesus snuck away from the crowds to go and pray and be by himself and with his Father. He realized, and, and I don't know what your job is, but I think his was bigger. I know you got some important stuff you're doing. But I think his. So he says, learn. That's the other thing that, that he said. Come and I will give you this rest. Well, how do we get this rest that he's offering to us? <clears throat> After we encounter him, he reorients our priorities in our lives. Your life will be different if you have encountered the God who reorients how you see this world. How do I know that? Because I've, I've been reoriented lately. In the last 10 years, somehow I have developed asthma. I don't know if you know a lot about asthma, but basically your lungs kind of squeeze in or something and you can't get any air. Nothing catches your attention like not being able to breathe. Your priorities get real clear real fast when you can't breathe. Asthma has helped me realize some of the things I was worried about aren't nearly as important as I thought they were. I was reoriented by this health condition. I wonder if COVID has caused some reorientation of your life. Maybe some of the things that you worried about, some of the things that you stayed up panicking about, some of the things that you put all your life and your energy into, I wonder if they look a little bit different on this side of a global pandemic. Maybe some of the relationships that we never quite had time to invest in all of a sudden are much more important to us. 
Maybe the daily joys of being together or, or, or living or serving. I started gardening. Nothing like seeing something grow up out of some dirt. Just to watch that little sucker shoot up out of the dirt gives me joy. I never thought about gardening before. But I've got a different perspective. And you know what? That's not unusual. God reorients us most often in the storms of life. Let me say that again. When you're in the midst of a storm in this life, it is quite possible, probable even, that God will use that storm to reorient your mind, your thoughts, and your priorities to get you in line with his kingdom desire for your life. We've all had this opportunity over the last two years to stop and see in the midst of all the chaos and the sadness and, and, and the loss and the grief. I'm saying there is a nugget of wisdom for you to glean about what God has called you to, what he's burned you with, what he's gifted you with, the people he's put around you that he's trying to get your attention for. Have you been reoriented? How your priorities shifted because the storm that affected this whole world was designed partially to get your attention that God has something for you. There is land that you are on this planet to redeem for the glory of God and for the building of his kingdom. And no one else can do it but you. No one can do the work that God has assigned to you but you. And we get so busy in the, in, in, the, in the treadmill of life, I, I, my favorite verse, I'm just going to throw this in as a free one really quickly. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of the world, but be, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God's good and perfect will. Sometimes storms help us realize that we're so busy running uh, mindlessly through the patterns of this world that we don't see the bigger priorities that are really the burdens of our heart. And we're spending so much time wearing ourselves out in things that we don't even really care about. And we're missing the rest that God is inviting us into. Pandemics. Wars and rumors of war. Economic uncertainty. I know God cannot be pleased with $7 gas prices. I know that's an abomination to my Savior. All of these things that disorient us and, and have us reevaluating our priorities, what you pause and see in the midst of the storm is your Savior speaking a word of new life, new priorities, new burdens that he's using to draw you back to himself. <clears throat> Next verb. Um, can I have verse 29? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take. You were given an invitation. You had the opportunity to receive a gift. And now the next step is will you Take the yoke. <laughs> See, now what I love about this is that action is demanded. It's decision time. God has a yoke that he wants to give you. If you're not familiar, yoke is kind of this wooden framing thing. Think about like oxes, right? And they're going to plow a field. And so they've got this big wooden frame thing that they drop over the shoulder of these big animals so that they can move forward and, and do the work that, that is assigned by the farmer. And God says, here's yours. Will you put it on? Take the yoke. Action is demanded. There has to be an intentional decision to take what God is offering, which, by the way, is work. This is what blew me away. If I want to get rest from God, I got to go do some work. <laughs> My rest means I'm entering into the work that God has created me for. I never saw that coming. So about a year and a half ago, I stepped down from my role as senior pastor. I didn't know what I was going to do. 
Um, I had a sense that this season was coming to an end. I'd served as the lead for 10 years. And so it was right before COVID happened. So I, I didn't know what was coming. I had some stuff that I was kind of dabbling in, but I just knew that it was time for me to step out of that season. And so I had a plan and my plan was primarily mint juleps on the back porch. <laughs> With a little bit of ministry sprinkled in from time to time because... I'm supposed to look like I love Jesus, but primarily it was going to be mostly on my back porch. And so that was my plan. And as the Bible says, God laughs when we tell him our plans, because now I have this job that I really, really did not anticipate to be in. And there's a joy in it that I never anticipated. There's an excitement, and I see how God has formed me from years and years of IT and computers and business and, and ministry, and I see how he has shaped me for this moment, but I had to decide to take the yoke that he set before me. And I very easily could have missed out on the blessing and even the season of rest because I was so busy filling it with other stuff that I would have missed the taking of what God designed me for. So I want to ask you, do you see the yoke that God may have before you? And if you see it, are you willing to put it on? It's not the absence of work. And I think that's part of this kind of American dream where we've gotten lost. We think that, that we're supposed to be getting to a place where we're sitting on a beach and somebody's got a big fan and they're waving us and they're popping grapes in our mouth. And we think that's the, that's the end goal. That's where I'm trying to get but not for the life of a believer. Your work is done when God calls you to glory. It doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what your education is. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter how many failures you've had. It doesn't matter how many pedigrees you have. If you are breathing, there is still a purpose that God is using your life for, for his glory and your benefit. It never stops. There's work for us to do. And the amazing thing is that the work actually is rest because we spend so much time caught up in work that doesn't uh, refresh our soul, that doesn't give us a clear meaning of our identity, that doesn't have us feeling like we are walking in the fullness of what God has for us. You are a cup overflowing. You are a royal priesthood. You are the apple of God's eye. He has designed you for glorious things beyond what you can dream or imagine but we got to take the yoke first. And we can't get caught up in this American dream, which leaves us so much short of the glorious kingdom dreams that God has for us instead. Amen. That's a good spot for one. <laughs> learn. Take my yoke and learn because I don't know as much as I think I know. I, I have no idea what God wants to do with my life. I have no idea what God is going to use me for. I have no idea who God will draw closer to him through my faithfulness of just telling the story. You don't have to be a Bible expert. You don't ever have to be on a stage with a microphone. You don't have to be a Bible thumper. All you have to do is be a witness to what your God, your Savior, your Lord has done in your life, and you will be a transformative agent in this world, empowered by the Spirit of God moving through you. There are people in your circles, neighbors, co-workers, children, relatives who will never ever in their life hear me or Pastor John say a word. You are the priest and the pastor and the, and the witness and the servant that will transform lives by your faithfulness of just sharing your story of the goodness of your God. They're never going to come in this building. They may not even ever claim that I'm a holy rolling Christian. But an encounter with you and the light of God shining through you will have eternal glory that you won't know until you get to heaven. We do this job of walking with God and learning every day how he can use us for his glory. And it takes tremendous humility. I mean, some of us are very well educated. You're a good looking group. I know it's some, you know, I met a PhD this morning. I don't have a PhD. I know there's some wonderful people in here, wonderfully pedigreed and educated and sophisticated folks. But do you realize it's quite possible that the lowest moments of your life are your greatest teaching tools? 
We walking around, we walk around trying to put on these images, all the good stuff, all the accomplishments, but so often in the storms, in the broken por- portions of our life, that's where someone else who is walking five steps behind you in your journey would be so blessed by your transparent uh, communication of how you lived through that situation at the lowest moment by the power and gifting of the Spirit of God in your life. That may be your best teaching. That may be your most powerful witness. Praise God for all the education and all the gifts and all the abilities that we have. But I'm saying be open to the humility that comes from the brokenness. As Pastor John said this morning, God's strength shows up, not when we're at our best, but often when we are at our weakest moments. Learn. Learn of his gentle and humble ways. Model it. And see who God begins to draw into your circle of influence. See who you become a pastor, a priest, a witness to effortlessly. Because the work isn't yours, it's really the Lord's. And we get the privilege of partnering with him in the building of his kingdom. And this is the last one I want to say. What happens as we engage in this process, I love this one, is that we find the rest We just realize, I didn't know that serving God, that loving God, that that sharing my simple testimony about what I've experienced while walking with, I didn't know that that would bring me joy, that that would bring me rest, that would be satisfying. Not for my paycheck, not for my retirement plan, but for my soul. We have a whole in our soul that only God can fill. And I see so many of us running so hard to make it to the next level, to get the next promotion, to get the second home, to to live on the beach or whatever. And those things are wonderful. Praise God. Praise God for those gifts of creation that we experience. But we can do all of that and miss Miss the greatest gift because our soul is fulfilled when we are walking in the places that God designed us for before we took one breath. So I, I, I want to I leave you with this. I want to encourage you with this. Why was this the linchpin? Because God, uh, through Matthew, had revealed the truth of the Messiah. He had given a picture of this kingdom reality. And in, verse, uh, in chapter number 10, he sent out the disciples to begin to do it on their own. And this is what I want us to understand. There's a cycle of being kingdom people. God invites us in, and then he sends us back out. And he invites us in, and he sends us back out. And it is absolutely legitimate that you may be in a season where God is inviting you in for some rest, to be replenished, to be, re, to be uh, strengthened, to be made whole, to be healed. That is absolutely part of the cycle, but we can't stay there. He is ascending God. He sent his son, he sent the disciples, and he sent you. There is a place that God has called you to. As I said it before, there is land for you to redeem. You I am called to redeem lost, broken, hurt, marginalized land, people to be part of that movement of God. And they will only see my savior if I'm faithful in doing the work that he called me to. If you are a child of God, you have been made into a brand new creation so that the glory of God may be manifested to you and your light may shine into corners of this world that no one else can reach. It's a promise. I know it's true about every soul in this place. And when we do that work, we find rest that we never imagined would be there. That's a lot for a couple of verses, isn't it? I said, wow, God, you've designed me for this moment and I can't live into the fullness of life. I can't live into those things that we proclaim. Now, what do we, what's the linchpin? Because we don't get to the great commandment and the great commission until we take up the yoke that God has called us into. 
to go and make disciples, to be the people of God, to, to proclaim the kingdom to the four corners of the earth, to, to love our neighbors and love ourselves. And we don't get any of that until I see that there's an invitation that I received and a yoke that I agreed to take on. And when I do that, the fullness of the kingdom can be manifested in my life. And that is a decision that we make, if I'm honest, every single day of our lives. Take up the cross, take up the yoke daily, and the kingdom of God will be manifested in our lives. I want to put this in three frameworks really quickly. When I think about taking up this yoke, a lot of what I said sounds very individual. And I think this is one of the verses in scripture where God is talking specifically to individuals and inviting us. He has a custom fitted yoke because he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows all of our experiences and he knows how he can use our high points and our low points for his glory. So he's made this. It's personally for you. But it's not just about us individually. We spend a lot of time in American Christianity thinking about the individual self, and most of the time God is talking to the masses. So I want to say this. Are you thinking about the work that God has called University Covenant Church to? I looked over the history. I was scrolling down through the seasons, the 50s and 60s and 70s, and all of this great work. Even the decision to build this beautiful facility was an investment made, not for the people that were making it, but for the vision of the kingdom that they saw for the generations coming behind them, which is really you all. You are blessed with this facility because your predecessors had a vision for what God could accomplish through you if you had this facility. And so part of the work is not just about me as Brian, but me as Brian as part of the body of Christ. God has invited you into this place. He's called you into this space so that together the men and women and children in this place can do a unique work in this community and in this world that no other church will ever be able to do. And you've got a history of it. You've been great at it. You've been witnessing. You've been proclaiming. You've been evangelizing. You've been inviting him. Lives have been transformed for generations because of your faithfulness. And I just want to ask you, are you still willing to take up that yoke today? The work's not done. The church, the body of Christ is the manifestation of the love and the power and the grace and the mercy of God in this world. And we can never forget that those people that are sitting in these seats next to us and online are part of a movement of God that he has designed before time began. What's your work here? What's your investment here? What's the kingdom building part of your assignment that involves doing it together with your brothers and sisters so that a broken world can know that our God is still in the miracle business? One last thing. Uh, next week, I'm going to um, Kansas City, our annual meeting. And part of the reason why I am not officially the superintendent, yet I'm the superintendent-elect, is because at that meeting, something ceremonial is going to happen. It doesn't have anything to do with salary or benefits. It doesn't have anything to do with my daily task or calendar. But the church... The East Evangelical Covenant Church will call me up to the stage. And there's one other superintendent. We will be called up to the stage and they will take a stole and they will place it on our neck. And they will at that point pray over us and invite us to accept the yoke of superintendent to play my part in the building of the kingdom of God in the Pacific Southwest Conference. That's exactly what Matthew 11 is about. I have to proclaim that I am willing to take on this yoke of Christ for the glory of God. And it's an honor, it's humbling. I wanna invite you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me <laughs> that I may do this journey well. But maybe more importantly than that, is I want you to pray 
for the men and women of University Covenant Church who have taken on the yoke of building the kingdom in this manifestation of the kingdom that we call University Covenant Church. I was so uh, excited for Pastor Sarah as I heard she's going to get some time away. Um, I won't get into this whole tangent, but you know that uh, pastoral ministry is one of the few professions in the, in, in the world where job, uh, job um, satisfaction goes down the longer you're in it. There is a burden for serving God's people. There is a weight. And so I would ask you to pray for your leaders, pray for your Sunday school teachers, pray for your small group leaders, and my God, pray for your uh, leadership team and pray for your pastor. In this season of chaos and turmoil, the church is going through an upheaval. The church will not be what we think it was. We can't, I'm so happy for your glory days of the past. That is not the picture of where God has taken you in the future. So would you pray for the men and women that are leading you? And would you pray for this man of God that, that, that God has given this church, Pastor John, that he may have wisdom and grace and mercy, would you love him, support him, figure out how you can be part of what God is building up in him because through him, a vision of God, I believe, will, will, will go throughout the leadership team. He has been called for such a time as this because God has plans for you that are greater than the plans that have come behind you. That's my, that's my hope. I'm gonna read this and then I'm gonna stop. I know I'm over my time. Paul had a prayer for his church in Thessalonica. Here's what he said. We continue to remember before God, our father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know brothers and sisters loved by God that he has chosen you. He has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power and with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. God has called you for such a time as this. And I pray that as happened in the church in Thessalonica, you became a model for all the covenant churches, for all the churches, for all the people of God in this reason, region that we look back to the day that University Covenant Church again chose to take up the yoke of Christ and the spirit of God moved powerfully through you. That is my prayer for you. I will be praying for you. May you be blessed and filled with the fullness of God. Amen. Amen. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the men and women that you have brought to this place. I thank you for the giftedness, for the passions, for the burdens that you have crafted them to carry into this season. God, you are not surprised by a global pandemic. It didn't catch you off guard. And we don't know the fullness of what you're going to do, but I pray that the ministries that flow from this body bless this community, inspire the church, transform hearts and lives and represent well the glorious power and grace of our Savior. Move in them and through them and may you be glorified by their work individually and collectively. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet Caught up in this holy moment I never want to I'm sorry.
Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Brian. Thank you, worship team. So good to worship together. Uh, we're going to have Sarah here. And is Gabe here as well? Gabe's here as well. Hey, uh, Pastor Brian made reference to this, but Sarah Fisher is our pastor of student ministry. She oversees all of our high school and junior high programs. And those of you who have kids and youth, can you just show some appreciation for Sarah? She has been killing it. Our church grants a sabbatical to our pastors every seven years, and Sarah is at that point, and I think Sarah would say it's coming at a great time. Uh, this has been an incredibly hard year for youth and their families, incredibly hard year, and so Sarah and her team have done such a stellar job. We're so proud of you, and so she's going to have the summer off. We're going to bless her. We're going to support our youth ministry while, she, while she's gone, right, right? And uh, uh, Sarah, why don't you just share one way we could be praying for you, and then Gabe, who uh, serves on our elder team, will pray over Sarah. So will you just share one way we could pray for you? Yes, this is Owen. He's very excited about it, too. Um, you could just pray that I just have uninterrupted time with Jesus. I think I'm excited mostly just to have time um, just to spend with me and Jesus and not produce anything. Um, and then I'm looking also at how leadership development um, affects discipleship. That's something we do well. So um, just that those things, my time with Jesus and that learning, um, come together well. Owen has a lot to say, too. He says you can pray for our time at home. Yes, that sounds great. Gabe, will you pray for Pastor Sarah? And, and church, let's pray for Sarah together. Father, we just left Sarah up to you. We, we thank you for uh, her service to UCC, for how you have used her to bless so many students and so many families over the last seven years that she served here, Father. We, we thank you for the blessing that uh, she gets to take a sabbatical, Father. And we pray that you would use this time to draw her near to you, to uh, you know, make her fall deeper and deeper in love with you, Father, and that you, she would rest in you and, and in your love. Love. And, and we pray that you would uh, use this to, to just transform even more the ministry that she's able to do when she returns here at UCC. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah. God bless you. Um, also means you can't text or call her for the whole summer, right? <laughs> unless, you, unless you want to take her out to dinner. Then it's allowed. All right, you guys. Hey, we're going to close up right now. Just a reminder, put your connection cards uh, in the boxes on the way out. Um, offering, uh, thank you so much. We just ask that you continue with your generosity. You can put your gifts in the offering bo box or online as well. And um, we are going to, uh, we want you to come back at 1230 for our celebration as well. Um, and patio folk, it looks great out there. If you would stack chairs for us. And indoor folk, if you want to go help stack chairs, that's allowed as well. Uh, eight high. I think that is all the details. Will you stand with me and receive the benediction? Church, I was just so blessed by the idea that God's work is rest. So church, may we take God's, would we take Jesus' yoke upon us. May you see his work as the true work of what gives you rest. May your idea of what rest looks like change, and you understand that the God of this universe yearns to give us deep rest, and it means taking on his work, what he designed for us to do. Let's, that, let's do that together. God bless you. Amen. See you in a little bit.